forget to like comment and share with all your friends as well and in case if you are visiting my channel for the first time don't forget to subscribe as well and to hit that bell icon as well good morning and welcome back to the mini tab series so in this video i will be covering the individual uh, or the imr chart so when it comes to creating a control chart it is generally good to collect data and subgroups if possible but sometimes scattering subgroups of measurement isn't the option it is because maybe the measurement may be too expensive your production volume is very low or the product may have long cycle time so in that cases you will use the imr chart to so though like any other control chart imr chart mainly basically has three main uses here it monitors the stability of a process it reminds whether the process is stable and ready to be improved demonstrate the improved process performance and when we look at the imr chart i will give you more detail how do we analyze that so as of now let us start with some example over here so here the example says the package of a particular dry food are being filled by machine and it is being weighed the weight for 15 successive packages are been recorded in the column c2 and the engineer basically wish to determine whether the filling process is indeed in control or not so here we will use the imr chart moving range chart to assess whether the process is in control or not so we will go to stats we will go to control charts variable chart since the data is in variable form and we'll go for individual here not the subgroup variable chart for individual click on imr chart right so here we have to select weight weight and click okay so you get this curve so in this case uh, we get two graphs over here so at the top of the graph is a imr chart or a individual chart this chart and at the bottom is the moving range chart so the individual chart or i chart which plots the value of each individual point or that is we have 15 samples here and provides the mean to access the process centered so we can see that each individual value is uh, within the control limit of 20.991 and 19.81917 and the mean of the 15 readings is coming out as 19.994 so the process is in control with respect to individual chart now we also look at the range value here the bottom part is basically the graph is the moving range chart which plots the process variation as calculated from the range of two or more successive observations so i have given her example say how do if you want to do it so it will say we have, have all these readings in this column so we will do uh, we will subtract this value from this value so you will get 0.007 that is like 19.92 minus 9.85 similarly you will follow this all this for in this case but in minute tab you don't have to do this this is the calculation which has been done in the background right that's why you see a difference of uh, range so you calculate all range and you create a average of all the range so that is a value which is coming up as 0.39 even in the range chart there is no point which is outside the control limit lower control limit or upper control limit as your lower control limit in range will always be zero and upper control limit is like 1.274 so with this you can see that the process is in control and the engineer wanted to check was that process was in control so with the conclusion that this process is running smooth and there are no such uh, issues as of now in this process now let us look at what other way we can create a control chart imr chart so we'll go to assistant here go to this option like control chart this is your help menu basically so you have to first figure out what type of data you have whether you have attribute data or a continuous data so in this case it is a continuous data so we'll take this path now whether data is collected in subgroups or individual value but we have taken the individual value we are taking it in groups 
So we will choose this path. That's why it's saying individual IMR chart. But if your data is in groups, then if the group is less than eight or uh, eight, then you will choose the X bar and R bar chart. If your values, if the subgroup size is more than eight, then you will choose the X bar and S chart. Similarly, if data is attribute, you will choose a def uh, whether it is a defective item, you will choose a P chart. But if it is a defects per unit, then you will choose the U chart. So in this case, we are selecting the since our data is continuous and it is not subgrouped, we will take an IMR chart. Again, our data is in this column, bit. So we will select this thing. And you now it is saying control limits and center limits. So how do you determine the control limits and center limit estimate from the data? Because we don't know, we don't have any unknown values. So we'll create the estimator from the data. Click OK. So this is the chart they have come up with. So let me see what does this chart says. It says that the process mean is stable. No points are out of control in the individual chart that we already seen in the previous uh, using previous method. All are within their control limit. And let's look at the other graph. There's a stability plot. It shows that accessing the stability of that process is stable. There is no point. Uh, there is no such uh, patterns. There is no pattern involved in this case. You can still check for the patterns. Uh, these are kind of different patterns you can expect whether there's a point is out of control or not, whether they are following some upward trend or lower trend, or they're closely following the center line. So all those trends uh, patterns that you need to analyze to check whether the process is stable or not. And lastly is the report card. So it gives you uh, all that check marks. So that shows the process mean and variation are stable. No points are outside the control limit of either chart. If the data are non-normal, then you may see increased number of false alarms. That is okay. Uh, there is a yellow mark over here that you don't have enough data to estimate the precise control limits. Yes, we have taken only 15 readings, but ideally we should have taken more readings around 30 or 40 to be get a more precise data of control limits and then uh, the correlated data. If the data are correlated, then you may see increased number of false alarms as well. That is okay. Since our, our, we, it was an individual moving chart, there is no chance of correlation in this case. So that is all I have on individual moving chart from the for the mini tab. I hope you like this video. Do give the thumbs up, and I will be posting more videos on read to mini tab in this uh, playlist. So do watch out that, and do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you, and have a good day.